Yes, the uh, Wii Shop channel is going offline forever. Uh, play the sad fiddle and feel that nostalgia. The digital distribution store came on way back in 2007 with the launch of the Wii itself. You feel old yet? If you were four around that age, you'd be 16 now. Old enough to drive, I guess, if I did the math right. But, hey man, we're not here for mathematics. We're here to feel terrible about the Wii shop going offline. Really pulling those heartstrings, aren't you there, proto? No, comment section, I'm not. What I have to discuss with you today is much more serious than just a simple nostalgia trip and a cringy intro. What I'm going to discuss is the death of what you paid for and the destruction of games, the inability to patch broken games, and worse, 12 years of video game history gone forever. So if this interests you, sign right in, click that subscribe button, stay up to date with me, and you can prep that like button because I guarantee you, you're going to want to share this to all your friends, ladies and gentlemen. Let's jump right in to today's episode. I often cite my military experience with my videos because uh, it was during an interesting time in video game history itself. I was enlisted when the Game Boy Micro came out, the DS itself, which is, wow man, uh, this crazy machine called an Xbox 360 and 599 US dollars and the Nintendo Revolution. Excuse me, the Wii. Anyone remember that sweet Smash Bros. website? Man, those were the days, right? When the Wii came out, I was lucky enough to actually get one of the last ones from GameStop. And I promptly realized that there were very few games for it that were what I actually wanted to play. Though good, like Pokemon Battle Revolution, Metroid Prime 3, and Excite Truck, these games were, yes, amazing and fun games, but limited, because the system itself was a new release. The Wii came with Wii Sports, a game that could be played by me and my friends for hours. But hours isn't forever, and one can only bowl so long before they become a master of the game to the point where they need a change in their lives. Enter the Virtual Console, a collection of Nintendo games priced cheaply, and they ran smooth on the Wii, surprisingly enough. Some of the first games I downloaded were Super Metroid, Super Mario World, and Zelda. I bought one of those sweet controllers attached to the Wii controller that were kind of like GameCube and kind of looked like a Super Nintendo controller, and bam, we had ourselves a nostalgia trip right down memory lane. It seemed great. All was good back in 2007. The Wii Shop carries a very catchy tune, which is absolutely amazing as well. I really miss that tune, and Nintendo, man, you should really bring some kind of background music for the digital shops that you have. And when you downloaded a game, Mario would come along and hit a brick, which was better than watching just some plain drab progress bar. Again, Nintendo, please bring these things back in a future digital market, okay? and also the current digital marketplaces that we have now. It would be awesome. All this nostalgia is going offline though, forever. Nintendo have unfortunately confirmed that yes, the Wii Shop is going to be offline forever January 30th, which presents the problem that if you paid for games and you don't have them downloaded, they are gone. I gotta tell you guys, digital distribution is definitely a fleeting service, isn't it? Many people will claim that you don't play those games that much anymore. That it doesn't matter, because hackers can just back them all up. And you just mod your Wii, or download the games on your PC and emulate them anyways. So who cares? Well, the consumer cares. Me. I bought those games. I want my games. If my Wii breaks, I can't get them ever again, cause they're stuck on that SD card. They're stuck on that Wii forever and I can't re-download them. I bought something with cash money, okay? I can no longer access my product 
Because it's old? Does that even remotely make any sense to any of you? Now, I understand that Nintendo must move on. You can't support a product forever. But Just Dance did come out on the Wii recently, which means this product is still supported by devs. Thank you, Ubisoft. You truly are an MVP. Ah, but you say, just back up your games and mod your Wii or emulate them, right? Well, that's, it's illegal, okay? It's illegal to make illegal copies of the game. Even when you bought the game, remember that's what corporations want you to believe. This is what they've been preaching so many years. So you can't back up your own games even when the service is offline because that's illegal, illegal copies. You get what I'm saying? ROM sites have even been taken offline because they were cutting into Nintendo sales. You can buy an NES and SNES Classic, right? Why, why not just do that instead? One, why do I need to respend and buy the same game again, or buy games that I don't want, or an entire system I didn't want to purchase anyways? Even though I love those two systems, this is a good question to ask for someone who essentially just plays a handful of games on his Wii, or hers. No prejudice here, folks. And then number two, where's my N64 Classic? Because as of right now, there really isn't one, so uh... Yeah, Nintendo, get on it. This is a very big negative for consumers, which is why you must be upset about this. And I mean it, you really gotta get fired up about this, people. This is not just moaning and whining about games, okay? It also cuts into video game history preservation. Obviously, we do have people that back up these console-specific games and shop-specific ones, like the unique DSi titles. However, it still doesn't bode well for the average consumer because either they are forced to hack or mod a system or emulate those games on PC, which they likely would rather support the companies and give them money for a very simple exchange to play the games that they'd like to play. A great example of this would be when companies lose licenses to a game or just take a game offline for various reasons and it can no longer be distributed legally. The Simpsons Arcade and X-Men Arcade are gone from the Xbox Live Arcade marketplace because, well, various reasons, but yeah, you can re-download it now and that's fine as long as you had purchased it beforehand. But, if you currently wanted to purchase it, you would not be able to do that, just due to the simple fact that they aren't selling it on the marketplace anymore. This causes a lot more issues, not only in piracy, but the need to find the ROMs, the emulators that would work with the ROMs properly, set them up properly, and then buy an ad controller, compared to spending $10 and downloading the game, and also supporting said company with the proper emulation already configured for you. Do you see what I'm saying for the average consumer? WiiWare games are going to be gone, just like the Simpsons Arcade and the X-Men Arcade games, which leads to the idea that video games and the history with them is going to be destroyed and you will never get to play those games unless you are lucky enough to buy a system on eBay that already have them on it hack or mod your own, or download them onto some sort of SD card and hope it never dies. And how long do SD cards last? Maybe 10 years? If not used, ideally kept up in perfect locations where there's not too much heat or humidity? Yeah, hopefully you transferred them in time before the corruption destroyed the data. And speaking of transferring, you also won't be able to transfer those games from your Wii to the Wii U unless you have the Wii Transfer Channel already downloaded. Another vital piece of software that's potentially going to be gone forever. The last big issue I really want to discuss here is patches for games. The Wii has games that are on discs, okay? They have no data savable on them. Read only discs. Therefore, your game, if it has a game-breaking glitch in it, well, too bad for you. Zelda Skyward Sword's progress blocking glitch will be there in the game forever. And in the future, if this is happening with this for the Wii Shop, it'll likely extend to other games as well. 
Like Pokemon, X and Y's game-breaking glitches as well. If you recall, there was a pretty serious one in that game. Now, there are many games that get patches, and without support from Nintendo, those glitches, they will remain. This also happened quite some time ago with the BS Super Nintendo system. BS doesn't stand for bullshit, though you'd be forgiven if you thought that. It was a system that was set up for people that they subscribed to a service, and then they were given unique gaming experiences. The most notable being Zelda. This satellite system would broadcast the game in increments for players to play in a live experience. And obviously, this is no longer around. But did Nintendo transfer this game to a cartridge or disc and back it up for people to buy later? No, absolutely not. Causing people to have to not only piece it together, but fix any game-breaking glitches and problems with it, and then translate it themselves for other people to emulate. Point is, without the support of Nintendo to patch, fix, or create backups for those games, not only are the patches gone, but the games themselves will likely be gone forever. The closing statements are going to be simple here. It is the company's responsibility to listen to the consumer and support our purchases, whether they be patches, updates, and or just straight up allowing us to re-download our product. Digital games have always been a bad purchase, and for that matter, anything digitally will likely go to waste someday. But when we give passes to these companies and they then get away with it, more and more things are going to happen like this, soon leaving us consumers with, well, nothing, really. I'm not calling for the boycott of Nintendo or anything crazy like that, but rather you just listen to my message, okay? You gotta understand that Nintendo, like any other company, may be better, may be worse, but when you buy these digital products, you're basically buying a timed product from Nintendo. Even if you had multiple Wiis backed up your games properly and you were satisfied with that, eventually they will all break, leaving you with nothing, because nothing lasts forever. Heat destroys components, electric components never last forever, and components that require you to maybe insert an SD card, insert a controller to a port, use controllers, they're all going to die eventually. Even new out of the box, things do decay and rot away. And that's the lesson that must be learned here. Preserve what you can, when you can, and spend wisely, and game on. If Nintendo, for whatever reason, set up a side server, just devoted to allowing you to re-download applications, and that's it, not even purchase them anymore, just re-download them, then that's A-OK, -okay, and I'm alright with that. However, you gotta remember, ladies and gentlemen, that wouldn't necessarily create a profitable situation for Nintendo, and when you're not making money, you're losing money. So who, after 10 plus years, are still using a Wii? Well, not many people, but I know a lot of people who are using a Wii U. And if you happen to have not transferred your Wii games, and you just didn't even think about it, they might be lost forever, stuck on your Wii, and never to be transferred over to your Wii U. So that really sucks. Anyways, I've been your host, Proto Mario. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave me a big thumbs up, because I'm really into video game preservation and video game history. And if you are too, you can leave me a comment down below telling me what you think about this video and Nintendo's actions. I'll see you guys in the next video, and as always, good gaming, God bless, and I'm signing out. Now I gotta go preserve some of my games.